This is the Soval SV06, an unassuming i3 style 3D printer with some unexpected features at a very attractive price. But in a world flooded with 3D printers that look like this, is it the one to get? Let's get started. How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse, and I just want to start by saying that the only reason I'm reviewing this machine is because it was suggested over on the Makers Muse community where you can make requests for future videos on the channel. I had heard of Soval as a company and indeed they've been reaching out for ages for a review, but it was Asker's comment that resulted in me actually taking a closer look at the SV06 and I'm honestly glad I did. So what does this little printer have to offer? It has a print volume of 220 by 220 by 250 millimeters, which is fairly standard for an Ender 3 i3 style printer, but in Ender 3, this is not. It's equipped with dual Z lead screws, a 32-bit control board with TMC2209 silent stepper drivers, a removable PEI print surface, and auto bed leveling using an inductive proximity sensor. What's that? Sounds like I just described a Prusa Mark III. Well, yeah, this printer is heavily derived from it. And I suspect that's the reason that it's fully open source itself, but we'll talk more on that later. The unboxing and assembly process was dead easy with the printer coming well packed in two main assemblies. And I really like how I've designed the gantry to slot into the base neatly with these two milled channels, allowing you to secure it in place with bolts from the side, which is way nicer and easier than awkwardly securing bolts from the bottom like so many other bed slingers I've tested. Despite being made from V-slot aluminum extrusion, all axes actually use linear rods and bearings, which I much prefer. V-rollers can easily get flat spots or gunk in them, which translates into artifacts on the print. I just find it so funny that V-slot didn't even really exist until 3D printers became popular enough to justify its production. And now it's so common that they've used it instead of T-slot standard extrusion for printer assemblies, even if they don't need it for the movement, <laughs> anyway. The little mono LCD screen snaps into place and the black powder coated 24 volt power supply bolts into place with two screws. And it looks very sleek indeed. Next, the control box snaps into place with this cute little spaceship knob. And then finally, the extruder which mounts via this awkward looking faceplate to a very nice injection molded mount with threaded inserts for durability. You wouldn't think it just by looking at it, but this direct drive extruder is incredibly unique and possibly the main selling point of this printer, even though they don't really heavily market it. It uses planetary gears to gain a compact and powerful reduction ratio from the NEMA 17 to two interlocked feeder gears, pushing filament with a huge amount of force down into the all metal hot end, which they say can reach 300 degrees C, but being an open frame design, you'd be pretty insane to expect this to print warp free nylon or ABS prints right out of the box. And with the assembly complete, things are off to a great start and it's time to calibrate the printer. Although the SV06 is priced as a budget 3D printer, it has a 25 point automatic bed leveling routine and no adjustment points on the bed itself. Again, very similar to the Prusa Mark III. So running the calibration routine is critical before attempting any prints. Thankfully, the manual is excellent with all the info you need, starting off with the Z Align. Being dual lead screw, it's possible for the gantry to skew when powered down if they get rotated out of alignment and there's no belts or other system constraining them. So Z-Align literally jams both motors up against the top of the frame to force them into level, much like the Prusa Mark III. Crude, but it works. Similarly, you'll notice that there's no limit switches. This printer can simply detect the spike in current when the axes collide with the frame and it homes accordingly. The bed leveling routine works well, but it's definitely a little slow with Soval choosing a tentative speed so as to get the most accurate results possible from the inductive probe. And very important, you need to adjust your starting nozzle height before starting your first print and expect to fine tune it somewhat. Despite what other people may say, I always find that nozzle heights change depending on print temperatures, and I much prefer to set them when the bed and extruder is at operating temperature. And as you can see from the damage in my PEI bed, my first attempt was uh, not so accurate. It's tedious, but once it's set, it's done. So spend your time now getting it right. So you can move on to the printing. The machine comes with a tiny amount of sample filament, but I loaded in a random roll of black PLA plus to start printing the demo models. And I tried to find a useful demo model to print, but they're all really random. Like 
I mean really random. The names mean nothing and they have no indication of print times at all. So I just selected one randomly and watched the first layer go down, then went to bed. And I came back to this monstrosity. I think it's meant to be like a squirrel, but the print had failed. But the most surprising thing was the fact that it ran out of filament and didn't do anything about it. That's right, this printer has no filament run out detection. Why? Why must these companies always be so close yet manage to leave one or two features out that absolutely ruins the experience? I have no idea. Unfortunately, clearing the issue if you've experienced a filament run out from the SVO6's fancy planetary geared extruder is not an easy task. Now, I did enjoy getting a closer look at the gears and assembly, but I didn't enjoy how much time it took to get it fixed. And I've got some serious experience repairing 3D printers. There's no way a beginner would be able to do that. So the first thing Sovol can do to this machine to make it even better is add a filament run out sensor because without it, it's not great. But luckily that's about the only thing that's not great about the SV06. I created my own profile in Prusa Slicer based off the Artillery Sidewinder X2 with bed leveling running before each print. But I've heard you can literally just use the Prusa Mark III profile with excellent results. So let's check out some of the prints. So like I said, the files on the SD card from factory are kind of useless. They're just huge and random, waste a lot of filament. And I don't think they've even been sliced that well. So the first thing I needed to do was make my profile in Prusa Slicer. And originally, like I said, I based it off the Artillery Sidewinder X1. The first thing that impressed me is the fact that this extruder needs very minimal retraction. It's set to like 0.6 to maybe one millimeter of retraction, which is tiny compared to the six, seven, or even higher millimeters of retraction you need on a Bowdoin style 3D printer to minimize stringing. Now there is a little bit of wispiness. I think that's mostly the filament here because when I switched to uh, a different filament, it wasn't quite as bad. So these are all PLA pluses and the finish is actually really, really good. So it gave me confidence to move on to a calibration cube. Now this is just my own version of an XYZ uh, calibration cube. And again, the, the accuracy of the print is very, very high, but there is a few things to notice. The print tends to have that sort of micro stepping artifact that you see off Prusa Mark III printers and similar. It's very uh, hard to see unless you get the light correct, but it is there. Otherwise it's very accurate and there's very minimal ghosting. I didn't really see any obvious ghosting on this print, no matter what angle you look at it. So those calibration prints out of the way, I tried the famous Gaia Anderson Cat and it's a slice of 0.15 millimeter layer heights and it is gorgeous. It had just one column of support that broke away from underneath the chin. No problems at all. The only thing I could see that could be improved is there's some slight layer inaccuracies if you look at it at just the right angle. And I'm not quite sure if that's caused by uh, inferior linear bearings. I know some people have commented on that about the SV06 having not very good linear bearings that ride on the linear rods. Or if it's some extrusion inaccuracies from the, the planetary direct drive extruder or something else. But again, it's very minimal and the print's very accurate and there's no stringing up here between the two ears that we often will see on Bowdoin style printers when they are printing the Gayer Anderson Cat. Similar to the Gayer Anderson Cat, this owl turned out fantastic. And you can actually see the facets of the STL file here. If you look at it just the right angle, the print is incredibly accurate and the ears again are really, really nice. You can even kind of see details that change in the edge of the ear where there's like a slight change in angle and the feathers look very good as well. But again, some slight layer inaccuracies that can be seen more clearly on the back. Moving on to some torture tests and calibration prints, we have the old school Maker's Muse clearance gauge. So this has gaps from 0.6 all the way to 0.15. Getting the first layer height, as I said, is critical in this machine. It has, does have the mesh bed leveling and the Z offset. But if you do get that correct, you'll get a really nice bottom layer like this, which has that lovely texture from the PEI print surface. And I could indeed get down to 0.15 with no issues at all on this clearance gaze. But what about the more modern and more difficult clearance castle? Well, here is that print and doesn't this look good? The clearance castle is my most challenging calibration print to date. It has several moving parts that need to work seamlessly for this print to be completed successfully. You see that first layer is wonderful. This came off the printer looking like this. The drawbridge in particular is incredibly well defined. That overhang is incredibly difficult to do on an FDM 3D printer. We managed to do it very, very cleanly and there's very minor wispy stringing, as I mentioned, that could be extruder, I'm not too sure. But beyond that small detail, this print is very good indeed. The drawbridge works, the castle can be undone and the portcullis can be raised. Now being a direct drive extruder, I wanted to see if this machine could do flexible filaments. So I loaded in some semi-flex TPU. It's not the most flexible TPU I've ever used, but it's pretty flexible. And I did have some teething problems 
where, for example, this print here, it's got a lot of blobs, it's not that great. So usually when you're printing flexible filaments, you need to disable retractions, but if it's a good quality direct drive extruder, you can have a little bit of retraction with flexible filaments. And with a bit of tuning, I was able to make this. This is a wonderful representation of my Maker Coin, and it is flexible, not super flexible, but it is indeed squishy. Now, unfortunately, the cooling on the SVO6 seems to be a bit of a weak spot. You can see there's some areas of the overhang where it actually reproduced it quite nicely, but then there's other areas where it looks awful. <laughs> and it's uh, really dependent on the direction that that overhang is facing, whether the cooling fan can actually uh, do anything to it properly or not. And my theory for why that's the case is because the cooling fan actually faces the heat bed and pulls hot air up from the heat bed and just blows it onto the print using a very anemic looking fan duct. And I don't think it's adequate, especially for filaments that are very soft, like this TPU. With the PLA prints, if they're slow enough, it doesn't seem to make much of a difference, especially if it's higher off the print bed, like we saw with the top of the ears of the Gator Anderson Cat and the Owl. But with these prints that are very close to the print bed, it does indeed seem to have a negative impact. And I would recommend, if you wanna do any mods to this machine, replace that fan duct with something more powerful, maybe a squirrel cage fan. And yeah, it can indeed print flexible filaments, with decent accuracy, which is really good to see and something I'll be doing more in future. And finally, I did try my lattice cube torture test, which is incredibly challenging. Many 3D printers cannot reproduce this and indeed this machine can't either. It tried its hardest, but as the print was forming, it was actually curling up due to that inferior cooling and that caused it to collide with the print head and fail. So I did try again with Z-Hop enabled, which moves the extruder up slightly in the Z direction between points. And there's also a setting in Prusa Slicer to make the print head actually try to avoid points that may be warping up to try to alleviate the problem, but it still broke slightly. It did finish, but there's a bit more stringing because of that Z-Hop that tends to induce more stringing, and it's not perfect. So cooling, definitely a weak spot in this machine, but there's not many other things really to complain about. Overall, the SV06 from Soval really surprised me. It's a hugely capable 3D printer for the price, and as a big bonus, it's actually open source, as it should be, because this wouldn't exist without the hard work put in by the team over at Prusa Research, and the wider 3D printing community. Having just reviewed the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon and P1P, which is incredibly advanced, but fully locked down and closed source, it's a very different take and maybe a strong plus if you're all about that open source community and want the opportunity to modern upgrade your printer, hardware and firmware. I took a look at the step files provided from Soval and they're the real deal. You could use any of these parts to modify and customize your printer to your heart's content and it's really, really cool to see. I do wish more companies would do this. If you'd like to check out the SVO6 for yourself, you can find links in the video description below. And if you're new to 3D printing, then why not check out my brand new ebook to help you get started. The ultimate guide to 3D printing is your shortcut to mastering the dark art of filament-based 3D printing and condenses over 10 years of my experience down into easy to consume sections. You can find a link below and a big thanks to Soval for sending it across the SVO6 for a review. For full disclosure, they sent it to me free of charge for purpose of review and no money has changed hands and I have full autonomy in what I say about this machine. As with all my 3D printers, this one will be used for a while and eventually donated to a makerspace or another maker as the great 3D printing cycle continues. Thanks for watching guys, bye.